Hi, I'm Emma. Welcome back to another chemistry educational video. Today we're working on the physical behavior of matter. Starting off, I have a flowchart set up. Based on your prior knowledge, pause the video and try to complete this chart. Matter can be divided into two categories, starting off with substances and mixtures. A substance is a matter that has definite properties and composition. A substance can be split up into elements and compounds. If you refer to your reference table, you will find all the elements and their symbols. Last week we went over the periodic table. Refer to last week's video if you need to review. Some examples of elements are hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, chlorine, and sodium. If you take these elements and combine them chemically, you could get compounds. Some examples of compounds include H2O, which is water, H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, We can also form octane, which is C8H18, and that's octane. These are compounds since there are two or more elements side by side. They have specific ratios, which you can see by their chemical formulas. This is their chemical formula. An example of mixtures can be salt and water. This looks like NaCl, that's sodium chloride, and we add an AQ as a subscript. This AQ stands for aqueous, meaning that this compound was dissolved in water. We spoke of elements in the last video, but as a review, elements cannot be decomposed into simpler substances by chemical change. Each element has a different physical and chemical property. An allotrope is the same element, but different structures. Therefore, they have different properties. An example of an allotrope is oxygen. And ozone. An oxygen mo molecule has two oxygen atoms connected by a double bond, while an ozone molecule has three oxygen atoms connected at an angle. As you can see, both oxygen and ozone have oxygen atoms, but have different structures, therefore having different properties. Next, we have physical changes versus chemical changes. I wrote down some phrases that will help you identify whether the change is chemical or physical when you get questions. For physical changes, we have melt, break, boil, tear, and dissolve. For chemical changes, we have burn, react, corrode, rust, and tarnish. When you break or tear something, it's still the same substance, but just in smaller pieces. So each physical change results in the same substance. For example, when you melt ice, so H2O solid, that's ice, 
into water, the liquid. It's the same substance, H2O and H2O. This change of melting relies on the melting point of the substance. For water, the melting point is zero degrees Celsius. For chemical changes, a key word is react. When two elements react, they chemically combine. In this case, a new substance is created. For example, water can be broken down by electrolysis, which is an electrical current that is passed through the water. So, plus electricity. And the water changes into two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. Compounds are elements that are chemically combined and chemically broken down. Compounds have definite proportions. Shown by chemical formula. For example, NO does not equal NO2, and that does not equal N2O. These have the same elements, um, nitrogen and oxygen, but they have different compounds. Mixtures are elements or compounds that are physically combined and physically separated. Mixtures have indefinite proportions. For example, one student may mix salt and water at a different proportion to another student, but both students end up with the same mixture, NaCl aqueous. There are two types of mixtures, heterogeneous and homogeneous. Both hetero and homogeneous mixtures can be separated by physical means. If you look at the root of each word, hetero means different, and homo means same. We could use this to help us identify which mixture is which. Let's look at the heterogeneous mixture. When looking at water and oil, you can easily tell that they do not dissolve. See, there's the oil at the top and the water at the bottom. In a homogeneous mixture, such as salt and water, the salt dissolves into the water and you cannot tell them apart. So once this person stops pouring the salt into the water, you're not gonna be able to tell apart the salt from the water. This is also called a solution. So homogeneous equals solution. When you try to separate the oil and the water, you can use a filter to separate the oil from the water. This is called filtration. The water will pass through the filter, leaving behind the oil. Another way you could separate heterogeneous mixtures is by using a magnet. For example, you have water and you add a metal such as iron, Fe, you can separate it using a magnet. Another example is centrifugation. If you add dirt to water, again this is water, and you add dirt, you can separate it use, using centrifug centrifugation, which spins the mixture and separates the molecules based on their density. So this is based on density. The homogeneous solution can be separated by evaporation. 
If you let this solution sit, the water will eventually evaporate, leaving the salt at the bottom. So if this salt was sodium chloride, the sodium chloride would be as a solid at the bottom. You can also use distillation to separate homogeneous mixtures. I drew a picture at the bottom, not the best, but you see here that an impure water is at the bottom, impure water is at the bottom, it then evaporates and condenses it evaporates into a gas state and then condenses back into liquid form. And then right here, we have pure water again. Another method used is chromatography. Chromatography separates a mixture by passing it through a in a solution through a medium which the components move at different rates. The different parts of the mixture move at different speeds, causing them to separate. That's all the material we have for today. Come back next week for another chemistry educational video. Bye.